Brother Mike, would you open us up in word of prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to be here in church, Lord, and thank you for that opportunity to get us here safe. Thank you, Lord, for all your answers and prayers in our lives. Oh, thank you for each one, each and every one that's come to be with us tonight, Lord, this afternoon. You send your Holy Spirit down, Lord. Help us to be back to the church, please, in the name of you, first and foremost. Amen. Amen. All right. Mike, you guys want to start us off?
Mm -hmm. Nunu. Nunu. You all know her. It's my mama. It's because she said, we only got three of us kind of acting like you don't have four. Not weird. <laughs>
nothing. You know, I always seem to fail at it. But then she sparked a, an interest in my head because I started to think about all the things that I could actually put as a New Year's resolution. You know, I'm addicted to Little Debbie's. And I could actually say, you know, maybe I should lay off some on the Little Debbie's or maybe a little <laughs> bit on Pepsi. Or maybe I could eat better and do all these things. But then, Jake, I started to actually think about what I could do in myself to make a difference in my Christianity. You see, as we look at this world today, in all of my life, I have never seen the things that I see today. And it's common. You know, when we were kids, Jake, this stuff was not common. This stuff was, was against God. And as I look around, I start to, to wonder how we got in that position. Well, then, as I started to think about the message today, I was talking to my mom last night about what was on my heart. Nehemiah kept coming to mind. And I, I started to think that how we could get in the position that we're in. And Nehemiah, actually, the story of Nehemiah holds that answer. When you start out in the first chapter of Nehemiah, the first three verses are his friends. They come to him and they say, Nehemiah, see, Nehemiah was a builder. They come to him and say, Nehemiah, all your family and all your friends in Jerusalem, they're all getting pillaged and they're all getting torn down because the walls have been destroyed. Nehemiah, we need your help. But in verse 4, I want you to see something that Nehemiah does because he does it immediately. He doesn't go to the king. You're going to find out who the king is here in just a minute. But in verse 4, it says, And it came to pass when I heard these words that I sat down and I wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before God of heaven. You see, Nehemiah didn't hesitate to make sure he went to God first, Jake. You see, he went for Artaxerxes, and he didn't really work for him. He was held captive by him. And in Artaxerxes, he was a cupbearer, which means anything that the king touched in a cup, Nehemiah had to taste it first to make sure that there wasn't something in that cup that was going to kill the king. And at this time, if you study history, Artaxerxes held one of the biggest nations in the country, in the world at that Bless time. Bless the Lord. And you see, he was not in favor of God. He didn't believe in God. He was a pagan, which you would believe in some all multiple gods, or even he would put himself in that. Just like Nebuchadnezzar, he would consider himself as a god. Just, you see, but God started to work in Nehemiah. He started to work in the heart. Amen. And Nehemiah knew that all of this, he would have to face this mighty king. He would have to say to this king, you've got to let me go. My heart, I'm called somewhere else. You see, so in chapter 2, Artaxerxes happens to notice a demeanor change in Nehemiah. And Nehemiah even says in there, the king has never seen me sad. But then the king asks the question, why are you sad? And he says, oh king, mighty king, the reason that I am sad is my family and everything that I love in Jerusalem is getting torn down. And he said something here right before he answered the king. And this is what he said. Then the king said unto me, For what dost thou make request? So I prayed to the God of heaven. Amen. Right out the gate in the first two chapters, what do we see about Nehemiah? We see that he was not hesitant in praying to his God. Amen. Because he knew Amen. if anybody could cripple the heart of the mighty king of Xerxes, it was God and God alone. You see, I see as we go through this world, and as we see the things that are going on in our own country, I feel that the reason we're here is the lack of prayer. Lord. You know, not only in our churches, but in our homes and in our hearts. You see, I think we hesitate a little bit, Jake, when it comes to the problems in this world. Because let me tell you, it's not who sits in the White House. And it's not who's on Capitol Hill that determines my destination. Thank God that 24 years ago in a little church like this, I got saved. And no matter what we face, I'll always have that. Amen. You see, we, wanna, we find it so easy. We find it so easy to say, oh me, oh my, how did we get here? But if you actually looked in the mirror, the fingers are pointing at you. Amen. I'll tell you, there's times in my life that I hesitate to pray, that I think that it's just a little problem, I can handle it. But before I know it, it's a big ball of misery. And you know, if I would have just hit my knees first, God would have took care of it. You see, me and I had a little problem that could have turned out real big because let me tell you what Xerxes could have done. Artaxerxes could have said, Nehemiah, how dare you come to me when you have all this provision for you? How dare you come to me and not be happy here? I'm going to take your life. That's exactly what Artaxerxes could have done. Let me tell you 
There's something else he could have done. He could have tied Nehemiah to a whipping post and had him beat to an inch of his life. Right. But let me tell you how God made that Xerxes respond. Bless me, Lord. You me. keep reading down. Our Xerxes gives him the permission to leave. But then Nehemiah starts to feel courage build up in him because he sees the work of God. And he says, hey, king, while you're at it, why don't you allow me passage through all of your countries? Allow me a letter to all the captains in all the countries. And while you're at it, king, why don't you give me provisions to your lumber yard so that I can have the stuff I need to build? Well, you see, our Xerxes allows that also to happen. And not only does he give him the letters he needs to get free passage, he also sends him with the captains and a few men to help him with the workload. You see, so God made a mighty big thing happen in the heart of this evil king because of prayer. You want something to happen in the heart of this evil nation, then we better start hitting it with some prayer. That's right. You can say, oh, it's all about who gets reelected or who gets this or who gets that, and it's not. It's about where God's at and where we put him. Lord. Skip on down. Now Nehemiah makes this journey. We're going to be in chapter 3 and we're going to start at verse 28. I'm going to give you the other problem that we have as Christians. Just give me a minute. I'm trying to catch my breath. Lord. Lord. Nehemiah goes on through his journey. He gets free passage. He gets to Judah. He gets to Jerusalem. And they start to give the workload. And you see here, it talks about a couple men, a couple different groups of men here that are building a wall. I want you to pay close attention to where they start that wall. In verse 28, from above the horse gate, repaired the priests, every one over against his house. After them repaired Zodok, the son of a murderer, over against his house. After him repaired also Shemarah, the son of Shaniah, the keeper of the east gate. After him repaired Hanak, the son of Shipra. I just read that. After him repaired Meshlam, the son of Barak, over against his chambers. You read there and you see that there's something significant with the people named here. These men, they started building the walls, but they built them around their own homes first. You see, yeah, there's, there's a little bit of strategy to that. What the strategy was is they figured if they could protect their homes, then they could go out and build Amen. more of the wall and not worry about people coming into their houses because the way that it worked back then, armies attacked the weakest point. You see, so they didn't build around their houses and they're over here working on the wall then their houses are going to get attacked. So let me tell you something spiritually what this means. You see, the other problem we have in this country and in this world today is we are not making provision in our own house. Amen. You see, we're not making sure that we're in order. Amen. We we want to sit back and let people tell us as Christians, as children of the Most High God, what is right and what is wrong. And let me tell you, the only one that has the authority or should have that authority in your life is God and God alone. Amen. You see, you shouldn't be happy with just sitting on a pew and not doing something for God. You better start getting your house Amen. in order. Amen. You want to make a difference in this world, then start getting yourself in order. You can't preach and you can't sing if Jesus is only something you put on on Sunday. Let me tell you, there's people that look at you every single day in this life. And I see it every day in work, and I have to hit my knees, Jake, because I fell, and I fall short. But there are people that are pointing and looking at you everywhere that you go. Amen. Bless them, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You want to make a true difference. Bless them, Lord. It starts with you. All over the Bible, revival's talked about it. But where is it always talked about first? Within the person. You see, you can't have revival without your house being in order. Revival starts in his children, and then it spreads from there. You see, 
that might pose a question for you then. When you're preaching all about getting your house in order and, and Nehemiah and, and prayer, and, but how do you get your house in order? What is it that you do to get your house in order? Well, God in his infinite wisdom gave us that answer as well. When you go to 1 Peter, chapter 2, very first verse. You see, before I read that, let me tell you where it starts. Jake, I grew up with you. We grew up in a little church that taught Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, there was one day 24 years ago that I sat here in this exact spot and Anita was sitting next to me and Bobby, I can't tell you all that he was preaching on but I can tell you that he mentioned hell and he mentioned it a lot and I can tell you that as an 8 year old boy no older than my son sitting right there that I knew something was wrong that I knew that this place he was talking about Jake I was going there no matter what I was going if I didn't make a change. So 24 years ago, I hit an altar like this. It was purged in the blood of Jesus Christ. That's where it starts. That's getting your house in order, Terry. If you're saved, your house has already started. you got to clean it and keep it clean. But if you're not saved, you better get it in order. I'm telling you, because if the world keeps going on the path it's going, he's coming. And he's coming soon. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Lord. Help the Lord. I'm trying to get my breath. <clears throat> Peter chapter 2. Bless this goes Lord. out to us Christians. <clears throat> How we clean out our house, Jake. It's right here. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile, and all hypocrisies, and envies, and all evil speakings, as newborn babies desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby, if so be ye have tasted that God is gracious. Let me tell you what that's saying. That's saying as a Christian, your fellow man, your fellow brother, you can't get around and go around behind his back and calling him all kinds of names and making fun of him and tearing him down. We need to start being a little bit more like Nehemiah and praying for him. We can't go all over and be envious of what everybody else has. We can't speak nasty things of the people that are supposed to be the closest to us. You want to have a house in order, then you start cleaning it. You start treating people, Christian brothers and sisters, like you would treat yourself. Amen. I'll tell you, when Jesus checks up on me, Jake, I want my house to be clean. Amen. I don't want to be found doing something I'm not supposed to be doing. Amen. I want it to be spotless. I want people, when I lay down on my head and take my father's breath, I want people at my funeral to know what I stood on and where I stood. Amen. I want people to look at me in this light and say, wow, there's a little bit of light in a dark world. I want people to know that about Mike Smith. Bless the Lord. But you can't get there without prayer. You can't get there without prayer. Amen. So Nicole, Bless as she triggered this thought in my head, what she really did trigger was self-evaluation, Jake. As I'm sitting there looking out my window and thinking about all the areas in 2019 that I let the Lord down, it broke my heart. Amen. All the times that I could have done something differently, Terry. Amen. Bless it broke my heart. Amen. So my New Year's resolution for 2020 is none other than getting closer to my Savior. That's right. To stand in the fire. If I'm the only one standing, I promise that I'm going to do the best to be the last one standing for my Lord. You want change in this country, then it's up to us to start it. It's up to us to do it. Can we pray? Amen. As a matter of fact, why don't you come up here because you're a pastor of this church and I believe that as a body we need to pray for our pastors. That's right. Your job is hard. You've got to lead this congregation, but you've also got your own home to worry about. 
and I respect you wholeheartedly for that. So as a congregation, those that are his congregation, please come up. Let's pray around our brother, our pastor. See, now you get the preacher attitude. You ever notice when a Baptist church and there's a bunch of Baptist preachers in there, they all start looking at the other one. Oh, no. <laughs> no, you go ahead. You go ahead. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> I will sing, but you can sing too. There's a lighthouse on a hillside, and it overlooks life sea. When I'm tossed, it sends out a light. It's a light that I might see, and the light that shines. In darkest night, will save me, me, oh, if it was the lighthouse, my ship would sail no more. Amen. Now everybody lives around us, they all say that lighthouse down. We all know the big ships don't sail this way anymore. Mm -hmm. Ain't no use in that old thing standing around. But my life goes back. That story night when just in time I saw the light. Outpost here, the great yeah. South, Bible Baptist, they're small churches, small congregations. You came by our church Sunday night, it wasn't as big as this crowd, you know. But you know what? I'm glad God doesn't require a minimum yeah. attendance. Amen. 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 There's two or three. Yes, amen. He said, Count me in. Yes. Amen. amen. There'll be crowds of hundreds. And they won't let God in. No. They won't let God in. That's right. But you'll get some that'll come and they're hungry and they have a need and they're depending on God. If God don't come through, they have no answer. Right. And they'll call on Him. God says, Count me in. Amen. Amen. Right. I love it. Amen. I love it too, brother. I will draw my strength from Jesus. As I
They want to stand and it's all, all, it's all godly stuff with abortion, gay marriage, and all that kind of stuff that God is not approved of. But you know what? One of these days, he's going to split the eastern sky. And you know what? The world can't do anything about it. That's right. He, they're trying to take... They're trying to take the blood out of the Bible. They're trying to take the Psalms out of the book. They're trying to take the blood out of the uh, out of the Psalm book. But you know what? I'd rather have Jesus, like the, like the Psalm says, than silver or gold. I'd rather have Jesus than to have riches untold. Amen. You know what? He's all I need. He's all I want. And I wish this world can understand about Jesus because he's all this world needs. Right. Amen. 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 Bless him, Lord. Bless him. Better place to be. I don't need silver. And I don't need gold. I don't need the things hey, of hey, this hey. world to satisfy my, my soul. soul. Amen. But I need. Because he's my salvation, he's what I live, he's all I If he's ever been good, Amen. he's still good. Amen. He's not going to change. No. Amen. He's still looking out for my good. Amen. Amen. He now wants nothing less than the best for his children. That's right. right. I love to see my kids do well. I love yeah. to see my grandkids do well. I'm so proud of Caleb. He's here tonight. He joined the National Guard. He's 18 years old. Bless he's grown up so quick. You know. Yeah. I love to see my kids do good and do right. Yes. But you know what? There's been times when they failed. And there's still times when you just go over and you hug them and you pick them up when they fall and you love them and, right. and let them know they're still precious. You don't love them for what they do. That's right. But for who they are. Amen. And uh, I'm glad I'm his. 
my highest calling in this world he it hasn't been that I was a song leader or a Sunday school teacher or preacher or pastor. I'm a child of God. Amen. Amen. That's my title. Amen. 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 Right. Thank you. Lately I've looked back on this wine road to the old familiar martyrs. How the mercy I have known. I know it may sound simple, it's more than not the shame. There's no better word to tell you than to say. Sing it if you know it. God has been good in my life. I've been blessed beyond my wildest dreams. I It's my darkest fear. I've had more gains than losses, and I know for joy than hurt. And the great spirit on me, I know what you serve. For God made good in my life. got what he deserved. But yet he looked over at the Savior and said, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus looked at him in all of his suffering and all his agony and said, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Think about that. One of these days, we're going to get there. Amen. 
I'm just proud about building my church and the gates of hell should not prevail. Aren't you happy about that? About Amen. I'll try, to, I'll try to play this. I tried to play this earlier a little bit for brother there, but I think I messed it up. I, I don't play it very often. You know. Bless him. Listen to the words. Hopefully it'll be a blessing to you. Once I was bound in chains and darkness, I had no peace, no joy within. God sent his word, it brought conviction. Save my soul, I'm born again. I got a rock on which I stand. I got a river in my life. I got a joy that's never ended down in my soul. I'm satisfied. Amen. 
Amen. From a life crucified. Amen. When I stand before you, my life's work is tried. There you'll view the content through the finest jewel's eye.
<laughs> you know, the one I'd ever heard sang that song in my life. And, uh, uh, don't hear very many people singing it, but his wife, Penny, uh, I don't know if she got to come home yet, but she's been in the hospital. Remember she just her? got home today. Did she? Okay. I just Actually, see Nathan at work. Praise the Lord. Amen. So just do remember her. I don't know if she's ever been. Okay. And God for that song. I was saying that earlier today. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yep. You know, I also heard that um, Trudy, her father, passed away. And let's, let's remember that family also. Yeah. I've got to say this. You know, Penny's got some bad lungs, but God can give her brand new ones if he wants yeah. to. Amen. Amen. That's how great God is. Yes. And I know that. Amen. <clears throat> Yeah. Hey. 
She used to sing it when she was very convenient. And you know, it, you think about it when she'd sing it. I, when I was younger, I used to be real confused by it. And then the older I got, I began to understand exactly what she was meaning. You know, we needed. Man, I was not here anymore. Papa was not here anymore. Dad's not here anymore. But I know one day I'm going to see him again. Amen. I know one day I have that promise. That's right. Amen. 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 Let's tell you about it. I won't do it again. To the holy mountain. Thank you. 
Lord, I don't want to do one thing. Come on. 
your heart, you're supposed to do it right then, right? Yeah. And it was just, whew, hit me like an arrow right through my heart. I love you. I love you. Bless you. Lord, I don't want to do one thing on my own. Today, and 
My horses were outside, and I had hay in the barn, and my dogs, thank God, had food, and, and I've got warm clothes, and in a, in, a, in a pickup truck. My mom and dad, I'm so blessed. Amen. We are so blessed. I'm, I'm thankful. I'm thankful for God's blessings. I'm thankful for this little church. I'm thankful to be here. And when you said that you had joined the military, I want to thank you. That is so, that is so honorable to me. For a young man to pursue that in his life and to fight for the right that I can stand here and sing freely and not have to worry about being killed or hung. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. You know, my dad, he's he's a, a retired Marine, and I thank him. I thank all of our vets and the people who are coming up. That is so honorable. And I, I just I want to thank you for that. Thank you so much for standing for our rights and our freedoms and fighting for us. And I know you're going to be such a witness to people that are out there that don't know about Jesus. You hold him close to you in every situation that you go through. There's going to be good and bad. There's going to be a up and down. And you're going to be thrown into things that are so frightful, but you know what? God holds you, and you know that. And I, I don't know why I'm saying this, but I just want to say thank you so much for being that man that stands for our freedom. Thank you for that. Yes, it is.
glad we serve an awesome God today. Amen. He's not, he's not doing, he's not high and lifted up today. Oh, hallelujah to the Lamb of God. John said he taketh away the sins of the world. John said he also said I can't even wear the loose of his shoes. Aren't you glad we serve a risen king today? He's not dead. He's still alive today. Oh, I defer the glorious morning. He reigns supreme today. Oh, he can have all these kings. I choose the king of kings and the Lord of lords. He is my king today.
I don't want to go. I don't want to do this. Do this. I think God's sick and tired of our excuses. I think 2020, I should be saying, no more excuses. No more excuses. Mm -hmm. I, I'm serious. No, I now, I'm not talking just to you guys. I mean, I'm talking, sorry, but I'm talking to myself. I'm just full of them. I am. And I'm ashamed. And I, I'm sorry, Lord. Bless I'm sorry, Lord. And I pray that God forgives me and that, that he gives me strength in 2020 that I will do his will. So and Jamie, not, not mine, but his. You know, I, I'm, I'm selfish that way. I, I would sit on my couch and, you know, <coughs> I had no excuse. I I no excuse. God. I <coughs> to we are doomed. We had no hope. Amen. I'm sure he didn't want to cross that hill with the cross on his back and the spit and doing everything to him. Sometimes we feel like, I don't want to go on. I don't want to do that no more. This one don't do this, that one don't do that. I'm responsible for myself. Amen. And I got to do what God wants me to do regardless who wants to do it with us. Amen. Uh, and I'm just thankful God didn't quit. Amen. And I'm not going to quit. With the help of the Lord, I'm not going to quit. <laughs> I'm going to go on. I have to stand alone. I'm going to go alone. I'm going to, but I'm, I love the Lord. And I always think of that. Why did God want to quit? We'd all been doomed. We'd been hell bound. No hope. But He kept on. I, I've just got a couple more songs in my heart. I know it's getting late, and I know everybody's tired. And, and uh, I usually set but up and watch TV late. <laughs> 20, 2020 is it's going to be a good year. I know God's going to bless us, and He's going to bless our efforts. So thankful that I serve a living God. He's not in a tomb. He's alive, and I can feel Him. I can, I can feel Him, and I'm thankful for that. And I do know how I made it. I do. I gotta get a little closer because my eyes. Come on up. Because of the one who lives in me, I found every promise he ever made. <laughs> Jesus will be. Yes, he will. <laughs> he walk by my side. side in desert strife. Love me and fill me with Amen. my pride. So let me.
Father. I don't know if you have it. There's a song my dad will sing for me. But Cecil and Kathy Turner was my whole life. And this is one of my papa's face when he would look out the congregation see everyone was crying here, standing. I don't know where it's called since seven days. Yeah. Seven days. Glory, 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 somebody touch me. Glory, 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 somebody touch me. Must be in the hands of the Lord. It was on a Monday, somebody touch me. It was on a Monday, somebody touch me. It was on a Monday, somebody touch me. Steps back, and 
You know, it, it's been stressful. It's been stressful taking over the church. You know, it's been stressful dealing with being married. You know, trying to start a family. It's been stressful with work and having to make decisions. Uh, and you know, Mike, it, it's even been stressful with my own family and my own mother. You know, it's been hard for me and trying to juggle everything and just trying to understand God exactly why am I going the way you took me. You know, it's just a great thing to be able to step back and to be able to go back to Bethel and remember the day that he touched you. Uh, it's such a great thing Amen. to be able to understand uh, that I was so important and that he would die on a tree Amen. for me. Uh, you know me, I've gotten into some dark places this year. Uh, I wanted to walk away from the church. Uh, I wanted to walk away from God <laughs> so many times yes, uh, because Amen. of something he put me through. Uh, thinking it was something I did or, or I was going the wrong route. Uh, and there was times Edie, that it got so dark. Uh, I thought, why am I even here. What's the point of even being here? Why is it anything I touch? It's just getting messed up anyway. And you know, people don't know this, but I'm just going to go ahead and say it, Edie. I was driving my truck down Dunbar and I looked at a ditch and thought, why don't I just go home now? But I want you to know something. As I hands up the wheel, Jamie, the truck would move. It's head straight on the road. It ain't hey, hey, hey. mine. I'm the one do you know who you are? You're a child of a living God. Amen. And I said I'll never leave you. No will I forsake you. I'm not going to walk away from you. I know you turned your back on me. <laughs> but I'm right here. Amen. And it's time to set it straight. You see, there's so many things going on. It's so much to look forward to. Why do I look forward to it? Because I'm a child of a living God. Because he's blessed me beyond measure. Amen. Because I'm not my own. And you know, there's times, Brother Dave, that, uh, you know, it just gets so hard. Uh, where I begin to think, Lord, uh, but you've done so much to me. I've had so many taken from me. I've been so beat down. It seems like everything goes away. Right. And he said, just hang on a little longer. Did I tell you it was going to be easy? No. I said, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. And that I'll be with you always, even up to the end of the earth. And you see, as I get into this, with the new year coming, Brother Terry, I'm glad I don't have have to worry about what it holds uh, because I know who holds it. Uh, I'm glad I don't have to worry about anything anymore, Reedy. Uh, I'm glad uh, that when I contemplated with God about preaching, uh, He said I'm not qualified. Uh, and He said that's fine. Uh, I don't call the qualified. I qualify the call. Uh, I'm the one who sets it up. Uh, I'm the one who's going to put you there. Uh, and I'm the one who's going to see you through it. Uh, I haven't left the ship. Uh, it's still crossing over, and it's not going to go down. I don't care what the world gets up against you, and I'm going through. Amen. And I'm so grateful for that. Amen. Why? Because somebody one day touched me, Brother Terry. One day a little boy looked up and knew he was in need of a Savior. And listen, he said, Lord, you're the only way. And he said, just come on to me. And I came to shadow, and I became washed white in the snow. And I became a new creature. I became free. I don't have bonds of this earth anymore, Edie. I'm a free creature to worship in spirit and in truth and to serve a living God. Amen. A living God. Amen. And let me tell you something. That's how I made it. I made it by my faith. I made it by His grace. Why? Because Michelle, sometimes my faith ran out, and I was questioning things. I was even despising God Himself, Edie, for the things that had happened in my life, and thinking, Lord, you're the one who did this to me. And He just sat up there, and He said, Oh boy, what have I done to you? Have I not blessed you? Have I not given you everything? Have I not put food on your table? Huh? Have I not put a roof over your head? Huh? Have I not made a way out of nowhere for you? Huh? What exactly have I done for you? Huh? And what have I done to you? And I said, Lord, you took him. You took him away from me. And Lord, 
He want me to preach. You want me to go on. But yeah, you took the pillars in my life. You took the ones that could keep me walking. The straight and narrow. And he said, Jacob, listen, they failed you. They failed you because they can't go with you. But listen, they got to decrease so that I can increase. And if there's one thing this year that I want to happen, it's for God to increase in my life. It's for God to increase in my family. It's for God to increase in everything I do. Because that's the answer. That's going to stop the fighting. That's going to stop the bickering. That's going to stop the resentment. Is as we sit down at a common centerpiece of Jesus Christ and grow in Him. See, that's what it's all about, church. It's about growth in Him. You know, I don't need mama. I don't need dad. The only thing I need in my life is Jesus. Because he's the only one who's going to see me through. <coughs> to grow in him. Amen. That's right. Amen. And there's going to be troubled waters. And I've already been crossing some, Jamie. And they're going to get deep. But as they say before, they're under his feet. That's right. See, Jane, we need to remember exactly who is the author and finisher of our faith. Amen. We need to remember exactly who is in control, Lord. You know? We need to remember exactly uh, who he is. Uh, we need to remember exactly what he meant. Uh, when Abraham, or not Abraham, but Moses uh, looked up to him and he said, Lord, uh, who shall I say sent me uh, unto these children? Uh, who is it that I should say tell them to send me? Uh, and he looked at him uh, and he said, you tell them I am that I am, uh, that I am sent you. Uh, and how precious is it, Janie, uh, that hear the words I am? Uh, well, what do you mean what's so precious about it? Uh, because when you get a hold of the blood, uh, when you get a hold of a personal Savior, Lord, and, uh, you know exactly what I am means uh, right. because you know he's everything to Amen. you. Uh, he's the comforter. Uh, listen, uh, he's the peace. Uh, and listen, he is my salvation. Uh, he's the rock. Uh, he's the way that I need to go. Uh, he's the lighthouse. Uh, he's the beacon. Uh, he's the guide. Uh, and he is the great shepherd uh, who cares for his sheep uh, that he'd even go as far he'd, uh, as laying his life down for him. Not because of anything that I've done. No. That's right. Bless him, Lord. Because all I am is a screw on the shell. Bless him, I've done so many things wrong in my life. Bless him. But I've done one thing right. Yeah. And I called upon a man named Jesus. Right. Out right. of anything that I want people to know in my life, I want them to know the one thing that I did right. You know? I want them to look at all the mess up. I want them to look at all the times why I thought I could make it on my own. I want them to see them. I want them to see how weak I really am. You know why, Jenny? I want them to see the dirty, filthy sinner that God called out. I want them to see it. I want them to know just how powerful my God is. Why? Because if he could do it for me, then he could do it for them. That's right. I want them to see it. Yeah. I'm not ashamed of anything anymore. And I'm most certainly no longer ashamed to proclaim the love of my God and the love that he's put into me. Because listen, without that love, Michelle, me and Lord wouldn't have made it three years. I can tell you that right now. Without that love, Jamie, I probably would have wrote off quite a few family members by now. And let me tell you something. Without that love, I wouldn't be standing here right now because I was ready to end it all, Michelle. I thought it ain't worth it anymore. Uh, and he said, I think you're worth it. Uh, you remember, uh, I went to a tree for you. Uh, you remember, I took the curse of man for you. Uh, you remember, I did this for you. Uh, why? Uh, because I love you. Uh, because you're special to me. Uh, you're something special. Uh, you're the apple of my eye. Uh, listen, uh, you're the one uh, that before I even laid the foundations of the earth, uh, I made the plan of salvation. And you might have given up on yourself, but I haven't given up on you. Amen. Lord, well, where are you? I'm right here. I'm in those prayers of those people. Don't you hear them? 
Can't you feel them? Amen. What do you think's keeping the truck straight, Jacob? What do you think is stopping you from falling under? Huh? What do you think is keeping you afloat? Huh? When it comes time for the bills to be paid, huh? and you're wondering just how you're going to pay them, huh? where do you think it's coming from? Huh? It's coming from me, huh? and that somebody's praying for you, huh? and I've never left you, huh? nor have I forsaken you. Huh? I'm right here. All because somebody touched me. He touched me. And I don't have to worry about a thing anymore. I don't have to worry about what tomorrow brings. I don't have to worry anymore, Brother Terry, about what year. You know, there's so many people, they want to try to predict the end of the world. But I no longer have a care for it. Why? Because I know what's coming. I know what my expected end is. I know exactly when I open my eyes, as I'll be as the thief was. I'll be in the presence of the Lord. And listen, I won't have to worry anymore. I won't have to feel a thing anymore. And I'll get to see the loved ones who passed on. That Patty, I've had to come to an understanding. Huh? They were never mine to begin with. They were his. Huh? They were called by him. Huh? They were washed whiter than snow. Huh? And he said, you know what? Huh? Brother, you got enough. Child, you got enough strength to keep going, huh? but they don't. Huh? So I'm going to bring them to rest. Huh? And I'm leaving you huh? to keep fighting the good fight. Huh? I'm leaving you huh? to carry on huh? everything that they've showed you, huh? everything that they've taught you, huh? all the prayers huh? that they've been praying for you. Huh? I'm leaving you to carry on. Huh? And I want you to know something. Huh? If you're here tonight, huh? it's because God's leaving you huh? to carry on the work, uh, to fight the good fight, uh, to keep on going, uh, to not keep tarrying, uh, or to be slothful in our words. Uh, listen, but to be expedient, uh, because it's coming is not. Amen. It's not, Betty. Uh, it's right at the door. Amen. And there needs to be somebody crying out. That's right. Listen, there's a man named Jesus. There's a man named Jesus. Yeah. And his blood is still washing whiter than snow. Why do we need to proclaim the betting? Uh, because we and uh, Terry and them were talking about it earlier. Uh, they think there's so many ways uh, to get to heaven. Uh, they think there's so many ways uh, that they can obtain salvation. Uh, but God and Christ said, uh, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, no man cometh to the Father uh, except by me. Uh, no man. Uh, he's got to go through me. Uh, he's got to go through the blood. Uh, and Jamie, how precious of a blood it is. Uh, you see so many people, uh, they want to sit back and think, oh, uh, when I get to heaven, uh, I'm going to enjoy my salvation. Uh, you know what, Betty? Uh, I don't want to wait any longer until I get to heaven. Uh, I want to enjoy what God gave me right here. Uh, I want to feel him. Uh, I want to reach out and touch him. Uh, he's as close to me uh, as he He's going to be in heaven. Huh? Why? Because he's living huh? and dwelling in me. Thank you, Thank you, Lord. Thank you. He's in me. Amen. And because he's in me, Lord, and, uh, because he washed me water in the snow, Jamie, uh, he put a testimony inside me. Uh, and you know what, church? Uh, we've been shutting that testimony up. Uh, we've been shutting it up. Uh, if you've been washed by the blood of the Lamb, let me tell you something, Lord. And, uh, every Sunday and every chance you get, uh, you should be shouting to the hills uh, about how a man named Jesus touched you. Uh, because that's our testimony, Betty. Uh, about how we were sinners. Uh, we were nothing more than a pile of filthy rags. Uh, but He took it uh, and He clothed us with His righteousness. Right. Yeah. Amen. Thank you. And then what did He do? What did he do? He made me a child of the living God. He made me an heir to God, Mike. He made me somebody who was valuable again. He made me a workable vessel, Lord. He made me somebody that could do his will. And listen, he knew that it was going to be a rough road. So you know what he did, Janie? You know what he did? He gave me a spirit. 
He gave me a spirit that bears intercession to the Father. And it cries out with groans unknown. Listen. And it makes petition to God about what I need in my life. You see, Betty, there's times in my life where I couldn't pray, but there was somebody praying for me. Yeah. Michelle, there's been times in my life when I couldn't pray, but the spirit inside me cried out to the Father and told him, remind him who he is. Remind him that I'm still here. Remind him that you and me are dwelling inside him. And then listen, Janie, as I began to think about all these things, I began to remember exactly who I was. I began to remember the testimony that God put inside me, Edie. And then you know what happened? I became his Jeremiah, and I was sitting there thinking I said I was going to keep my mouth shut. I didn't even want to preach today. And he listened. And I began to sit there and shake. I couldn't hold it anymore. And he came as fire in my bones. the mark of the high calling. What's the mark of the high calling? Is it preaching? Oh no, it ain't preaching. Is it song leading? No, it ain't song leading. It's being a child of the living God. That's the mark of the high calling. It's when you're set back and you can see the idea that your blood that is purged, that is purged you, water than snow. Amen. <laughs> That's what the high calling is. And they said to press towards the mark. Yes. Bless what does it mean to press? Bless it means to continue. To push forward. See, God's children need to move forward. We've been sitting back way too long. You want to argue with me? Turn on the news. What's happened? God's people have been sitting back far too long. They've shut their testimonies up. They've allowed Satan to shut him up. And I say aloud, because let me tell you something. He's not greater than me. Why is he not greater than me? That is because he's not greater than what's in me. He can't touch what's in me. Listen, Christ said, I have them all in the palm of my hand, and I've lost not one. I haven't lost them, Janie. They're mine. So listen, anything that Satan has that he can throw at me, Jennifer Terry, it's anything that I give him. It's what I allow him to do. If he wants to bring up the past, Betty, then I allow him to let it beat me down. If I remain silent, Lord, then I allow him to shut up. But the greatest thing that God ever did for me, and that is washed me white than snow. Amen. A man touched me, and his name was Jesus Christ. I don't have to know the time, I don't even have to know the place, Betty. Because what happened in my heart, it spills out. You can't deny Christ. You can't deny Him in your life. Why? Because you can get out there, Edie. I mean, you can get out in the world all you want. But listen, it won't change who you are. You can try to make yourself and mess you up. You can try to dirty yourself up. You can be as me and try to get so far out in sin, Edie, that I thought, this is what I honestly thought, I thought I could sin so much that God wouldn't let me preach. I thought I could sin so much that God wouldn't even allow me to stand in the pulpit. And you know what happened, Edie? He said, listen, I've washed you white in the snow. I've spread your sins as far as the east are from the west. Listen, I've made you a workable vessel. And there's nothing that is saying that all this show, all this show is one of the greatest things. It's one of the only things I'll buy. Jenny, you can do just about anything with Dawn Dish Soap. But he wouldn't clean my sins off. But he said, listen, brother, listen, son. Listen, I want you to know something. I washed you whiter than snow. And I want you to take a good hard look. Because the blood is still there. Amen. It's still there. Amen. It didn't just wash away. Yeah. You're still mine. And I still have a use for you. Amen. And listen, everyone in this church house today, you're still God's. And he has a use for you. 
And if you don't know him as a personal Savior, listen, he's standing there with arms wide open, saying, come unto me, I'll give you life, and I'll give you life more abundantly. I'll give it to you. I'll be that comforter when the storm comes. Listen, I'll be that one who sets you at ease at peace. You see, as I begin to think about things, Brother Terry, and uh, all the storms uh, that I've been facing, uh, and Edie, I know the storms are coming more uh, as we cross into this new year. Uh, and listen, uh, I was thinking about that man that touched me uh, and exactly what he was doing when the storm kicked up, Brother Terry. Uh, you'll read Edie, he was asleep in Bible shed. Uh, he was at peace. Uh, why was he at peace? Because he knew it was going to the other side. And listen, I began to think about that. And I began to think about how I don't want to be as the disciples were in that storm anymore, King. I don't want to be crying out to God saying, do you not care that we perish? I want to be as Christ was. And I want to be at peace. Why? Because he's the one that's the captain of the ship. And it's going safely through. It's going all the way. God's church is not going to sink. Listen, the storm one day will kick up. And God's going to say enough's enough. He's going to say enough's enough, Lauren. And then he'll declare the time shall be no more. But listen, I've still got breath. I've still got life in me. Amen. So what do I need to do, buddy? I need to push towards the mark of the high calling. I need to remember I'm a child of God. And what do I need to do, Janie? I need to tell those around me about a man named Jesus. About a man who touched me. About a man who washed me whiter than snow. About a man who spread my sins as far as the east is from the west. About a man who even when I thought I could out sin him, said, oh no, I've still got you. Amen. And we're going to straighten this up right now. We're going to correct it. You know, I've said it a thousand times. My pap was the one who always said it to me. That if you ever want to hear God laugh, tell him your plans for your life. Just tell him your plans. And God's going to laugh. And he's going to say, that's good. But now let me tell you what i got planned for you. Amen. I know you don't want to go down this road. But Jacob, there's going to be people who are only going to listen to you. Brother Terry, you're going to come across people who are only going to listen to you. And it's time that God's people began to be ready in season and out of season. See, that scripture just wasn't for preachers. It was for God's children to give a reason of the hope that's within them. See, the hope that's within me is Christ. And I know Christ is never going to leave me. I know He's never going to forsake me. And Lord, He's given me life and life more abundantly. He's given me peace. Amen. He's given me comfort. When no other comforter could come, He came and brought me comfort. And listen, as I began to think about the world and the shape it's in, you know, you begin to think that there's no hope. As long as there's breath, buddy, there's hope. Amen. Because as I draw another breath, it's another opportunity to tell someone about a man named Jesus. Amen. As I draw breath, it's another opportunity to proclaim the goodness of Jesus Christ. See, as long as there's breath, there's hope. Amen. Because as long as there's breath, <clears throat> then there's a chance for a prayer. As long as there's breath, then God's given another opportunity for one to come to His throne and say, Here I am with nothing but a pile of filthy rags. And he says, I'll take them. I'll take them. And I'm going to clothe you with my righteousness. I'm going to give you a white robe. I'm going to give you a new body one day. I'm going to give you a mind that doesn't forget. Amen. I'm going to give you legs that can walk again. Amen. I'm going to give you breath that will never leave you. Amen. Listen. And I'm going to give you water where you'll never drink or thirst Amen. again. Amen. I'm going to give you living water. Amen. All you got to do is draw from it. Just draw from it. And you know, Betty, sometimes I think, oh Lord, I'm thirsty. 
I think, Lord, I'm so thirsty. And he says, then draw. There's a living spring inside you. Because that water I was talking to the woman at the well about, it was me. It wasn't the water in the well. It wasn't anything else. It was him. And he said, I'm living in you. Just draw from me. If you're feeling weak, draw your strength from me. If you're feeling downhearted, draw your comfort from me. If you're feeling like your life's going nowhere, just remember that I'm in control. I'm the one still calling the shots. And I'm going to lead you on. Why? Because everything that you go through, and I know sometimes you're going to straight and mess up. But listen, I'm still going to make it. Uh, to my glory. Why? Because I'm going to give you a testimony. Uh, each and every time you mess up, uh, you're going to come out shouting. Each and every time you feel like you're just getting beaten down by the world uh, and you're all alone, uh, you're going to come out shouting uh, and you're going to be lifting my name up uh, because I'm the one seeing you through. I'm the one who's taking you through. Everyone else is going to fail you, so quit trying to grab hold of them. And finally, just grab a hold of me. Just take out of my hand. Listen, and let me lead you on. Let me be the author and finisher of your faith. Because that's what I am. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And I am everything that you need in your life. 2020, Brother Mike, he was right. We need to draw closer to God. Right. And we need to start doing His will. And we need to stop worrying about every single little thing. Because our God is in control. He's the great physician. And listen, He said, not one thing have I done for them. I'll do it for you also. You have not, because you ask not. And many people think, well, Jacob... I've been praying about this for a long time. Let me tell you something. I've been praying about things for a long time too. And you know what? You know what I've learned, Betty? I've got to learn patience. And I've got to learn to wait upon the Lord. I've got to learn that I'm going through every trial and tribulation for a reason. I've got to know that when God said, I'll put nothing on you that you can't bear, what He really meant, Betty, is... Uh, I'll put nothing on you that I can't see you through. Because of my strength, Lauren, I fail. And I fail big time, Janie. I began to think about shutting up the greatest testimony that God ever gave me. <coughs> I began to try to take away that you want more hope of someone else. Why? Because I wanted to take the very breath that was in me. But God said, as long as there's breath, there's hope. Amen. Bless the Lord. As long as I'm here, there's hope. Amen. Just call unto me. Just seek me as your refuge. And let me guide your ways. Quit worrying about it. Because you're something special to me. Amen. Amen. You're very special to me. And I've laid paths before you. And I know they're going to be troubled. But listen, I'm going to bless you more than what you can imagine. Amen. If you just go a little bit further, you're almost there. Just keep pushing through. We're almost there, church. We just got to keep pushing on. Amen. And you know what? God's going to do something for us great. He's going to move in our lives. And He's going to be able to for us to be able to raise our hands and say, I made it because of a man named Jesus. Amen. Amen. That's why I'm here. Amen. Because of a man named Jesus. And one day he reached out and he touched me. And he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And that he, my God, can do two, not do two things. He cannot lie and he cannot die. Amen. So when he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, he meant every word of it. Amen. And when he said... I'll give you a living water, and your well will never run dry. He kept that promise also. Amen. I was just too stubborn to drink from it, Betty. I was too stubborn. And see, God's people, 
they're too stubborn. They're too stubborn to really truly worship their God in spirit and truth. What do you mean? What I mean is, God's people have shut up their testimony. They've shut up calling sin, sin. They've wanted to not offend people. Brother Terry, I'm guilty of it myself. There's many times where I didn't bow my head and bless the food that I was about to receive because of a fear of offending those I was with or those around me. And you know what it turned out, Betty? It was far worse to offend my God than to offend my friends. Why? Because he said, you know exactly what you're going to be doing. And he said, when you bow your head, one's going to see it. And you're going to be able to plant. Or maybe someone else already planted. And you're going to water it a little bit. And I'm going to be able to give the increase. Amen. But you know what you did by refusing to bow your head? You delayed my plans. You delayed me. Oh, Benini, I got a whooping like no other. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. I couldn't even sleep at night. There's so many times that my covers are short because of the simple things that I refuse to do for my God. Amen. Why? Let me tell you something very important. And something to remember going into this new year. All those that I fail to share my testimony with. All those that I fail to to bear witness of Jesus Christ with all those who I become too stubborn to talk to, Betty. Guess what? Their blood's on my hands. Yeah. Their blood's on my hands. I'm accountable for it. Why? Because God's saying, I sent you and I sent you for a reason. Don't worry about them. See, I'm the great I am. I'll send a witness to them. But you're going to answer for it now. You're going to answer for why you didn't speak when I told you to speak. I want you to answer me. You see, Betty, so many times we want to question God. And you know how God answers our questions? He answers them the same way he answered Job when Job was questioning him. He says, gird up your loins like a man. I'm going to demand an answer of thee. You answer me. I'm the one who asks the questions. And I'm the one who calls the shots. You aren't greater than me. Were you the one who split the sea? Were you the one who said it'll go no further? Were you the one who hung the stars in the sky? Amen. Who are you to question me Amen. in my will? Who are you? And then I have to answer. And I have to say, Lord, forgive me. For I'm just a sinner saved by grace. I am nothing but you made me something. I am that I am because you made me that way. So forgive me, Lord. And just let me keep on praising you. Just let me tell the people of you. Just let me be a beacon to somebody. As I go through this storm, let them see you in me. Right. Let them see me failing, but you carry me. Amen. Because I know I'm going to cross to the other side. So, Edie, today I'm going to pray the old year out and the new year in. And I'm going to try to draw as close to God as I can. Amen. Here. And you know what I'm going to do this year? I'm going to be at peace with God Amen. and knowing that He's in control. Right. I'm going to find refuge in God. Amen. And I'm going to let whatever happens, happens. And I'm going to glorify His name through it all. Amen. Because I know I have an expected end. Sorry about that. I know one day I'm crossing over Jordan. And I'll sit with Him. Why? Because I'm an heir of God. Amen. Why am I an heir of God? Because somebody touched me. And it was the hand of the Lord. Amen. There was no question about it when he touched me. Because I changed. I became a new creature. Because what I thought was life wasn't life. But Betty, life entered in. And I can tell you this, this evening. It's been a life more abundant. Amen. Because everything I've faced, I've never faced alone. Amen. He's went before me. He's helped me, and that He's carried me. Even when I couldn't think I could walk anymore, 
He picked me up and kept walking. And he said, push towards the water. Amen. Bless the Lord. I'm done. I didn't intend not to reach in. He could go ahead and sing another song. Can we pray? We can pray. That's fine. If that's what you want to do. I feel what we need to pray. That's fine. Let's pray. That's fine with me.